Warning! This podcast contains Maggie. Even though the episode's laid out. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the I've Seen on TV pop podcast for Supergirl Season 2, Episode 19, Alex. Here's Dom with me. We have Nikki and Rachel. How's it going? It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. Mm-hmm. That's good. As uh, well as to be expected. <laughs> so for for a Alex centric episode, what did you guys think? Probably Alex is one of our weakest characters. So what what do you, what do you guys think of, of of this episode? It was more Kara and Maggie of <laughs> Than anything, I I was kind of hoping there'd be more bickering between Kara and Maggie than there was, because there was at the very beginning of the episode when they were having dinner together, and then it just kind of devolved into them doing you know bad cop good cop kind of thing. Oh, I had I enough. Know. I had enough from the very beginning, from the start no, of the episode. No, you know what? When when they're sitting there with the N- NCPD, the National City. Police, yeah, National City Police Department. Maggie's talking down the hostage, and Supergirl just like barges in, drags the the the, the criminal out, whatever you want to call him. Um, and and Maggie just like sat there all like I I, I almost had him like at that moment I was like I don't even want to watch this episode like it's just <laughs> gonna be Maggie and Kara and they're gonna be bickering back and forth and then the dinner happened. And I was like, oh, I really, and then it, it actually went uphill from there, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it did, I... it, it, it just turned into them playing, you know, their sides, good cop, bad cop. Um, but I, I, I actually enjoyed them bickering because they both had their points. Supergirl is, she just, she's stupid when it comes to her powers. She just goes in, she doesn't think of any of the consequences afterwards. Like Maggie's like, criminals are using the Supergirl defense, meaning you, you know, excessive use of force and all this jazz and, you know... Vigilante justice. Like, and, it's, yeah. it's, she, she's like, no way, that's stupid. No, really, that's how it works in the real world, too. So, like, um, hello, use your freaking brain. You should, you the know... The fact that they even tackled talk to that. Them first. The fact that they even tackled that, like, the, the Supergirl defense, like, that... It really kind of impressed me, because... You sit there and you think about like when back when all these these comic books were made, right? And and mm-hmm. you have Superman and and just brute forcing. Nobody thinks anything of it, you know. It's just all happy go lucky. Criminals are shooting super Superman, and he's he's dragging them, throwing them, you know, across the room, locking them in a cell, and that's the end of it. It's like the police, yeah. good work, Superman. That you know, it's it's whatever. And through this whole show, we've seen, uh, like. The fire department, you know, really happy when Supergirl comes and blows out a fire and, and rescues people. You know, like, even though it kind of puts them out of a job, they're still happy because people are alive. They're okay. But the police, yeah. they're dealing with a whole different aspect here. Like, it's, it's as Maggie put it, it's a it delicate, uh, like a precision. Like, you, you can't just go in, guns blazing, fists flying, you know? Mm-hmm. They, it, for Supergirl to take those few extra seconds to be like maggie can i go in and do this and for maggie to give her the okay makes it different but um cleo mentioned this episodes back saying that supergirl has this complex and she needs to get over it and she it's really freaking annoying her where she thinks she's always right and it, it this again it came up again this episode where she's like no you know i'm doing the right thing people are alive because of me mm-hmm. no there are there are there are roads to follow. Superiority yeah. complex. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, just it just feels like it's been going on for longer than just this episode. So oh, it, it has. That's, how, that's how they made it feel like. So I'm glad they didn't delve in it too much because I think them bickering all the time would have been just like, can we just get over it? Can, yeah. can we, I just want just... someone to prove Kara, Supergirl, wrong. Being like, okay, set her straight. Be like, you have to go through the proper channels before you act because you're just going in there and not even thinking. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously, if this was Clark, if this was Superman, uh, he wouldn't have 
as much issues with this. Like, he would know he's already dealt with a lot of it. Supergirl, she's still learning, too. Keep that in mind, you know, so... Um, mm-hmm. uh, she but doesn't she know the law. she works for the DEO. No, I know, but she doesn't know the law like that. You know, like, the DEO obviously doesn't share this information with her because it's the first she's heard of the Supergirl clause. Or yeah. the Supergirl defense. Like, if this was something, you know, that was the DEO was sharing with her and she was ignoring it, that, that's another story. But it seems like... This was the first time she ever heard of the Supergirl defense. So yeah. the DEO, if they're aware of it, they haven't shared that information with I, I honestly don't think the D- DEO is aware of it either. I think it's just a we police department. Not be. Yeah. And they want the DEO to share stuff with them. And they're not sharing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. if you want to work together, you have to... Yeah. Yep. But how about that awkward dinner? Uh, Alex apparently can't cook paella. Paella they had actually pineapple difficult. on their pizza. Yeah, yeah why I know. would they do that? that she goes, horrible. she goes. I love pineapple and ham pizza, and I'm like, me too. No, and no, you Mon-El's ruined it. it. You ruined and the she's pizza. She's eating it, and I'm like, I really want pizza right now. Ruin the. Pizza. I love the fact that they did bring that up. I thought that was kind of funny. That was, I mean, that's just the big thing on the internet. But I mean, the last <laughs> time that I order, I I microwave macaroni and cheese, they had to clear out three city blocks. <laughs> He's exaggerating, but yeah. <laughs> it's like me, you know, like I, I could burn a bowl of cereal, you know. Don't turn on the oven. <laughs> but yeah, that dinner, it was just very, very awkward. Alex ran out to go, um, you know, try to, jeez, uh, try to comfort Supergirl, um, or uh, Kara. You know, tried to talk. She didn't really go to comfort her. She went to talk to her because she's like she's just as stubborn as you. Yeah. She's... Yeah, but this is so much a comfort. The way as a... the way she talks to her, it it comforts her. You know, so it. She she's... talks to her like she's a child. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why she, she gets is. away with everything. She's fucking spoiled rotten. But little does <laughs> Alex know that um, uh, Rick Malvern is actually in the elevator waiting to kidnap her. Hooray. Eh. So I, I feel like that was way out of left field. Well, kind of. It was. But like when Maggie doesn't show up, um back, you know, at her apartment later, Maggie gets worried. Or when Alex mm-hmm. doesn't show up, and, yeah. Uh, Maggie gets worried, and then she goes off to see Kara at work, and Kara said that she never heard from Alex. Uh, they get a phone call from Alex's phone, uh, find out that uh, Alex has been kidnapped, and they have 36 hours to free Peter Thompson from prison uh, at Albatross Bay, or Alex will die. What has that actor played in before? He's played in a lot of stuff. Yeah, like, I saw him, and I'm like, I, I know your face, I just can't place you. Mm-hmm. And once we hear where it is, where he's from, we'll be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, he's, he's a, he's a character actor. Definitely, because it's like, I know where he's been. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it was kind of out of left field, but then the backstory of him was kind of, was really interesting. And I was almost yeah. like, "What? Are you pissed off because Alex turned you down? What is that? Almost they almost yeah. went that route because he was like, oh, I, if I knew Alex was, sw- you know, played for the other team, kind of thing.' I'm like, "You are, you are mad that he, that she didn't like you then, so you're doing this." Yeah. Kind of to thing. be fair, Alex didn't know at that time. That no, she was no, playing either field, she didn't know what the hell was going on. But I mean, still, like, if she doesn't like you, she doesn't like you, dude. Get yeah, over right. It. He was. Yeah. He was, like, totally playing that. Well, uh, this whole thing was not to get back at Alex. That, that, no, that well, was I not know, the purpose of this. The purpose no. of this was to free his father out of prison. You mm-hmm. know? Um, but, you yeah, know, he it's just... just knew. He knew yeah. because he knew from... from And ho- the whole point of his story was, because I was trying to go on a date with Alex, it inadvertently revealed Supergirl's identity to me, uh, and now I'm gonna exploit that. Yeah, is basically yeah. Uh, that was the point of that story, um, but Albatross Bay um, is something that does not show up anywhere in the uh, the DC universe, to my knowledge. Um, from the the research I did, I couldn't find it. Um, so I'm wondering if it's supposed to be like the DC equivalent of uh, Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, 
don't know from the, the you know they did the air shots of of Albatross Bay of the prison. It didn't look like it was an island or anything. It would just look like it was off the side of a bay. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah, it could definitely be a playoff Alcatraz. I just thought it would be a little bit more islandy than yeah. than like you know a part of the land. I don't know. Yeah, isn't an albatross a bird that like? Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah, I was going to say, it's a seabird, so that could be a real reason why they called it that, just because it's yeah. there, right yeah. there, like yeah. near the bay. Yep. I don't think it was like Albatross Bay Prison or anything, but they said that the prison was located in Albatross Bay, so, um, yeah, to my knowledge, there was no uh, Albatross Bay mentioned ever in the, the DC universe, so this is new to us. Um, I'm hoping we'll, we'll hear more of it, because... I liked it. I want to see more of it for sure. Um, but uh, trying to figure out, because at this point they don't know that it's Rick Melvern. So they all they know is they have to free Peter Thompson. So Maggie, like, uh, Supergirl's got no leads. Kara's like frantically trying to figure out what to do. Maggie's using her police work to be like, mm-hmm. okay, well, let's examine this. Let's find the connection between the only thing we do know, which is Peter Thompson and this potential person. So they go and talk to Peter, and uh, he he's sitting there, John Jones and and uh, Maggie and Alex, and, and they go in, and he's like, yeah, um, J C Penny came to visit me, you know, like, uh, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, when when he, and he started talking about a sale, and then Carter just flipped out, and she pounded the desk, uh, and she dented it, and the the look on his face. I was like, oh, God, does he know? Does he know she's Supergirl now? Like, I, I, mean, I wonder how much... I mean, it was a huge dent. Yeah. I mean, it could have just been like, oh, she's really mad. still pretty significant. But I'm, I'm assuming since his son knows that he would yeah. in turn know too, but uh, I'm not sure. But, um, so John Jones ends up reading his mind, finds out that he actually doesn't know anything. So, uh... They leave, uh, and Kara's all mad because they don't have a lead, anything like that. And luckily, uh, Wynn is able to crack the, the uh, identity by cross-referencing court cases and birth certificates and all that fun stuff, and uh, discovers that it is, in fact, Rick Malvern from Midvale, which is, I believe, the high school or junior high or even elementary school, I'm not sure. Midvale would make it... If if it if it, that's the name of a school and not a town, uh, Midvale would seem like it's mid school, so it'd probably be junior high. Uh, but the kids were really young uh, in the flashback, so. You know, it looked like um, Alex almost was seemed about fourteen, fifteen, sixteen in that area. So yeah, I was almost gonna say that it, it's either late uh, elementary school, early uh, middle school. So, but. I think Rachel's muted, but um, the uh, she's I was like almost doing dishes. Oh, okay, um, so uh, Rick had mentioned or Alex had mentioned she had they hadn't seen Rick since graduation. The last time she remembers uh, Rick, he used to carry Alex's book bag. So you know he he was totally crushing on Alex. Oh um, yeah, but mm-hmm. you know he he mentioned all oh, before he knew that she played for the other team. You know all this and. That's we went into that whole backstory, and then we find out he's actually been planning this whole scheme for about a year now to bust his father out of prison. So. I mean... He's a little off his rocker. Yeah, I wonder... There's got to be something in the background like that happened between graduation and now that made him go a different route. Because he was. seemed like he was an okay guy. There was. They well, mentioned he, that he, he had a he really was abused. bad... Yeah, he had a bad childhood. He was he was mentally abused by his mother. Physically abused by his mother. Uh, he mentioned that um, he used to have bruises that he was hiding, and Kara was hiding her superpowers, you know, like... That that was the, the reference there. Uh, that's when his father, his real dad, uh, mm-hmm. when he tracked him down... His father saved him, rescued him from the abusive household. Uh, so now he wants to rescue his father in return, you know, from prison. So. But does he have to be like one of those, you know, cryptic psychopaths when he's talking? Apparently. No. No, you don't. It rem- this episode reminded me a lot of Saw. You know, it was like Maggie's locked in a room. 
uh, she's gonna die kind of deal, and they're playing all these games to try to save her. You know, it reminded me a lot of that. So, it was, uh, yeah, it was very cryptic, and he knew, because wh what are you gonna do? Like, y you have to outsmart and out brute force Supergirl, because if, if you just have Alex tied up somewhere that you could find her, you know, then... Yeah. Uh, Supergirl's just gonna find her, and then you're not gonna get what you want. Like, he's gotta do this to, to manipulate her. Oh, yeah, he knows. I mean, he's planned it for a year, obviously, because he knew about John Jones, too. He factored everything in when his father, a.k.a. John Jones, came in to talk to him. He saw right through that. You know, he's like, ah, you, you, you don't think that I knew about you, uh, John Jones, being a shapeshifter and all that? Like... You don't think I factored and that into it? he was blocking it? him for some, somehow. Yeah, like, I, somehow I, I like he was know, blocking I, his... I wish they would tell us how he was doing that. Mm. I don't think no, you I... can act, even, like, fortify your brain enough for John Jones not to break through. There's no way a human being can so do that, something... I don't think. Yeah, there so was... he must... I think he's working... he was working with Cadmus. It's possible. I don't know. Because, like, how would you get your hands and that kind of technology to block out a mind reader. Unless he was, pre I mean, unless he was preparing, like, for a whole year, like, he was mentally preparing I don't. Himself. I don't think a human is capable, even if they prepare their whole life to block know. John Jones out like that. It, it might be possible. You might have to train your brain, but I don't think the average person is going to be able to do it. You have to, like, do that knowing what you're looking to do. You know, I, mm. like, I don't know. I don't think he would. I don't think he'd be able to. I don't know. Uh, it's possible he's working with Cadmus in, in some way, shape, or form, or has knowledge, like, in his research, he made him across Cadmus, and, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think, like, Cadmus sent him to do anything kind of deal. I don't think it works like that. No, 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 I don't, no, 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 no. no I didn't, I wasn't saying that he worked for them, I said he's connected to, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we see Alex is super resourceful, right? Um... She realized that her subdermal tracker wasn't getting a, a reading from where she was, so she uh, sliced herself open and, and pulled it out. That was a fantastic yeah. little scene. Don't know if I'd be able to do that. No? No. I mean, it didn't look like it was deep into the skin. No, but still. I don't I mean, think, you still it, have to cut I don't think it was to... through like all the layers of skin. Oh, no, no. No, it's... It would have to be under um, a certain amount of layers because yeah. eventually it would just work its way out. And yeah, you don't yeah. want to keep replanting it. So, like, it has to be under the skin but not, like, in the muscle kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably in the, the fourth or fifth layer of skin. So. Yeah. Um, Brian in chat says, for an episode called Alex, we didn't get to see that much of her. I don't think the whole point was to see her. It was that they were working towards saving her to build a connection between Maggie and Kara so that they had a better understanding of each other. Because that's kind of how it started off. They didn't really understand each other and how they each other worked. So. Yeah, but what yeah. we did see of Maggie, like, we just, it really showed how, how resourceful it is. Like, she hooked the, the tracker up to the camera's, uh, GPS and, and uh, IP address and, and all that, and then uh, signaled for an update, which flagged her location, and that's how Wynn was able to track it, um, but ends up, Kara rushes over there against Maggie's, uh, you know, will, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, Kara springs a booby trap, and now we have water filling up the room, and we have less than four hours to uh, to rescue Alex. Instead of the the uh, thirty two that we were originally given, so thirty six. So like this this is all this was all planned by Rick. Obviously, like he had this, oh, yeah. Yeah. but he knew it's not like I'm gonna put this fail safe in in case she. No, he knew he knew exactly that that she was gonna go and find that, and that we'd knock the time down to four hours. You know, it was not a fail safe safety if she finds it. He knew she was gonna find it, kind of deal. So. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Of course, Maggie gets uh, super upset that Kara rushed in there. She has some words with her, and Maggie starts bitching her out and just like, "Look, just because you're her, her sister does not trump uh, me being her girlfriend. Like, I have just as much say as you. 
I'm the one that, that made her uh, realize who she really is and all that. And um, I don't really disagree with Maggie here. No. I mean, they both have their points. So, I mean... Neither one of them should be arguing the point of who's better than whoever. Well, they should just be working together. Simple well, as that. he put it in, in, in their head. He's like, well, which one of you loves her the most? I'm even... Yeah. Yeah. He and, put and that in their head. That makes Maggie a terrible police officer for letting a, a criminal manipulate her. And it makes Kara even more stupid for even listening. Yeah, because Maggie actually went to break him out of prison. She, you see the uh, the tech she's working with to mask her under the cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, until Supergirl flew in there, talked her out of it, and then actually talked to Peter and had uh, um, like a heart to heart with him and had him reveal the location of Maggie, uh, the only mm-hmm. place that he could imagine that she would be. Um, Alex. And she's there. She or Alex? Yeah, sorry. And, uh, and she's there. And, uh, luckily, um, they're, they're able to save her just in the nick of time. Like, she's out of breath entirely. She did everything she could to get as much breath as she could. Um, once again, showing how resourceful she is. Um, and then as soon as she gets back, the first thing Maggie does is elbow him right in the face. Just, Boom. No, uh, Alex punched him in the face. That's what I said. Yeah, Alex. No, you said Maggie again. You uh, said Maggie. I... <laughs> Alex freaking just clocked oh, him. She, right. yeah, yeah, she decked him good. Yeah. I was kind of hoping she'd just knock him right out, but, you know. But she's like, you gonna wipe his mind? <laughs> John Jones was like, yeah. And mm-hmm. she's like, make sure he remembers that. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know how that's gonna happen, but that's funny. Like, so, yeah. Alex and Supergirl kind of make up because apparently Alex's problem was never with Kara. It was only with Supergirl. So I don't know. Well, I don't think that's over, but we'll see. No, definitely no. not. We will see. Uh, the other little side plot we had this uh, this episode was actually really interesting to me. As much as I hate uh, Rhea, um, having her offer this deal to Lena was actually really interesting. The, uh, the transmatter portal and all that stuff. And, and I was actually really intrigued with the way that uh, Rhea was, was talking. She sounded like a business person, which, you know, for someone who's only been around Earth for a little while to kind of like catch on to yeah, how exactly. business people talk is really, it's, it's impressive. Like, and she when did we saw her, her on the ship. Googling. Yeah, when we saw her on the ship, it seemed like she could barely string a coherent thought together. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. like she was unreasonable, uh, wasn't willing to uh, learn anything about the planet. You know, it's just like she didn't care. Like, it was none of that. But now we see when she actually cares about something, she can put her mind to it and she can get things done. So, yeah, like Rachel said, she Googled. uh, She knew all about, you know, MIT and... You know, Lena and went to Yale and like all this stuff. She knew about, you know, Lena's mom. She knew everything. She even knew that the Luthers didn't like aliens. That you know, she was just every. She had everything down. Yep. But she she didn't have enough of the actual background for it to be a solid bit for her to use well, when trying to pass over this deal no it, it seemed it seemed pretty legit like lena bought all of it up until the dinner and when she was talking and like they had the heart to heart about you know the mother-daughter relationship the, the son and the girlfriend and you know like all that and then how uh Ray, Ray was like uh and then uh my husband died and you know and i I was just like, your husband, you killed your husband. Mm-hmm. It's like, what a clever way to word that you just murdered your husband. That's that's pretty clever. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but then she slipped up when she thanked the gods, plural. Um, and that's that's when you see uh, that uh, Lena had uh, this look like, huh? What what are you up to? You know. So uh, we we finally saw that alien scan device come back into play. Uh, and actually get some use here, because uh, she tricks Ray into giving her thumbprint, 
uh, saying it was going to be for security access, but it was really the device that we knew about. So mm -hmm. I knew as soon as she was doing it, I was just like, oh. Ray was just like, why is red always a bad thing on this planet? You know? <laughs> and I just I started cracking up. I mean, this is goes to show how resourceful and how she, uh, Rhea, Rhea was on Daxum. Mm -hmm. And how manipulative and how set in her ways. And she's... Uh, right now, she's like... She's like a scared creature being cornered. Yeah. Kind she's, of. Lashing out, she's lashing out. She's doing everything she can to preserve the life she knew. Mm -hmm. and, and at the everything's same time... Being and everything's being taken, taken away from her. Or she the, thinks everything is being taken away from her. At the same time, she's underestimating her, um, her new... Like, she's underestimating people on Earth. I don't know that she she's never been here. But she, that's because she also, like, Kara has a superiority complex. Because, yeah. you know, on Daxum, she was the go-to. She was the person that ran the show. It wasn't the king, you know, her husband. It wasn't him. She ran the show when it, it was supposed to be the males, you know. But, um... They, she was uh, a little more superiority complex than her, but yeah. Well, well, yeah, definitely. But, um... No, this is absolutely building up to something bigger. I think it'll be the oh, yeah. uh, the end all, well, like the finale episode, definitely. Well, um, she's pissed off at at Car in the first place, even mm -hmm. though she really has no reason to be pissed off at Car because it was Monel's decision to stay. It was yeah. Monel's decision, you know, to well, cause be with Car. He, he thinks she that she's thinks, brainwashed, you know. Yep. So she thinks that it's just it, and that is. That's an overall, like, human. That's a human thing. Mothers do the same thing with their boys. I've seen it time and time again It when I dated mom. Oh, she's no good for you, honey. Because, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. And it's, and that's, 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 a, that's a parent thing. I don't think that's just an evil dictator thing. Yeah. But, <laughs> well, it, I mean, like, she totally appeased to uh, Lena's heartstrings, and, you know, she's mm -hmm. like, Look, this this is the the situation. She got really really tugged on those heartstrings, and Lena was conflicted, so she called Kara, and she's like, "Look, I need some advice." And Kara's like, "Both I'm, of them." I'm really busy. I, I'm dealing with something, you know, and, and you know. Unfortunately, uh, it was the wrong time for both of them. Yeah, to be talking to each other, it was really bad. Yep, it was a really bad time. Yeah, so, I mean, if Kara was was available to talk, you know, she would have found out immediately. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know. Fortunately, she, she was lost. Been... Oh, would she God. have said anything about Rhea? Because the only way that she'd know that Rhea is an alien is that, you know, Supergirl. So Lena would be able to add another docket to her list, being like, okay, Kara is Supergirl. I think, well, Lena, honest, Lena I think knows, Lena already knows. Lena knows that Kara is friends with Supergirl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so she could I mean, be like, Supergirl she... told me no, like, bad things about her. You know, like, I don't think that would raise any more flags that are that are not but already think, raised, you know? What I think would have, would have happened is that Kara would have been like, okay, don't do anything yet. And then Kara would have went to mon and been like, listen, your mother... Your mama is being... <laughs> you need to control your mama. <laughs> you need to go set her straight. She is... She's gonna... She's trying to dig, you know. I mean, she, I think she would have totally went to Monel and been like, okay, your mom is just... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's probably gonna happen. Anyways. So, oh, yeah. In the end, Lena decides to work with Rhea, and... Uh, so, getting this transmatter portal is going to be bad, because now it's going to be able to bring uh, the Daxamites to Earth, and it's going to basically be another invasion all over again. Yeah. So. Hmm. Well, then we'll probably get more Clark, and then we'll probably get more crossovers I with hope the we get Flash. more Clark, because we had him in the very beginning, and it lasted yeah. like two episodes, and then he was gone. And that was the end of it. So. I heard that he might, he's going to be coming back, so I yeah. don't know when, but... It has been in the room right now that he's coming yeah. back. A lot of people do want him back, and I understand because they you hyped them up actually, for the season, you know. And he did really good. I mean, I love the actor they got to play him, and he wasn't what you would typically think that he was going to be. He was very, he was a 
a lack of better, who's very human. Yeah. <laughs> you know? See, I think looks wise, the actor doesn't fit the part for me. But he did an amazing job as Superman. So I don't I'm very like torn. But I think he looks a back, little goofy in the promotional like photos and stuff. Like you look at him down there in the in the corner and he looks a little goofy over there. But when he was actually on the show, he, I feel like he fit the role better. He looked better in the suit than the promotional photos, anyway. Yes. Yeah. So. Lighting and, you know, yeah. Photoshop and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Brian Photoshop says... Photoshop is supposed uh, to make things better. Brian Not says, I, I could have... thought. Could have done without scene... I could have done without the scenes uh, Le- with Lena since they had nothing to do with the plot of this episode, but... Uh, I actually They're found the, the Lena up. stuff to be yeah. the most interesting uh, part of the episode for me. Um, they are to set up the next. Yeah, it's arc it's today. the alley oop. It's the alley oop for next next episode. I'm assuming. I think it's the alley oop for the rest of the season. Well, yeah. I mean, we only have like three episodes left, so. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we knew we knew that uh, Ray was going to be the big bad. You know, uh, the season when when it ended with her murdering her husband you know oh my god wait till he finds out wait till on finds out that she murdered daddy yep oh god she's gonna try to think well i did it for the good of that some blah 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 or try to turn around on him it was your fault that he died because you didn't come back or she's gonna be like oh your dad came at me and and mm-hmm. i had to defend myself he went crazy because mm-hmm. you did because you left yeah no you're the crazy one yep so next episode is called City of Lost Children. With an alien or when an alien attacks National City, Supergirl and the DEO learn the alien is a Forian, uh, an otherwise peaceful race with telekinetic powers. Um, Guardian gets a lead on the Forian's address, but instead of finding the culprit, he finds a very scared boy named Marcus. Uh, Marcus will only trust James, so it's up to Guardian to stop the attacks on the city. Uh, and then Rhea's plan escalates uh, further. So. Dun dun dun. <sighs> yep. So. Well, he's not... a... Yeah. I don't know. It feels kind of like a side plot episode. It's like uh, they're it, trying to it's gonna fit. Be, it's going to be. Fit Jimmy in. It's going to it's gonna kind of be like this episode all over again. We're get, and we're dealing with, you know, a distraction, and mm-hmm. the. Side plot of the episode is actually going to be Rhea again because she was mentioned in one sentence of the synopsis. Uh, so mm-hmm. I feel like we're going to get just about as much Rhea as we did this week. Um, and, you know, it's, it's only going to set it up further, you know, for more of her plan, what it is, and probably see the portal constructed and, you know, the setup to all that. And then the episode is probably going to end with the portal turning on and maybe someone or something coming through. Uh, but, you know, and then that'll leave room for for the, the big story with her. So I'm fine well, with it. Well, has it been confirmed that the rest of the of uh, Monel's family has been offed? Because he, he had older brothers, right? I believe I so. I think. Or was he the oldest? I don't know. I just know that he was, he had siblings. Yeah. I'm pretty damn sure. I don't know if, like, I know they can say that they were all gone, but you can, I mean, there's a possibility that one of his bigger, better brothers, you know, and I'm putting bigger, better in quotation marks, walks through the, the portal and, you know, maybe he has more powers than mon or something like that and wreaks havoc well, I, because he's well, mama's yeah. boy. Right. <laughs> they better get a good looking guy if they did, because they got a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They have to. They, have they to set the, the bar pretty freaking hard. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, this, they but, did. Uh, we'll have to get yeah. uh, Ian Summerholder to guest star. I knew you were going to say that. I knew it. <laughs> I, I, knew. I would not argue with that. I'd be all for I it. I knew, knew you and your boy crush. Nikki, where can people find you? <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at LadyVenom24, L A D Y V E N O M24. Awesome. Rachel, where can people find you? They can find me at. Twitter at VikingWitch76 and on Twitch at VikingWitch. Awesome. You can find me down below at Phenomenon, P H E N O M E D O M. Phenomenon. And you can find us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, G, Twitter, MySpace, 
and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Mm-hmm. Till next time. See you guys later. Bye. Up, up, and away. It, it, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's, it's really a plane. <laughs> it could be a flying hot dog. It oh. could. That's delicious. Mm. Mm, I, feel, I feel like I'll have ketchup and mustard and fly off. <laughs> 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 <laughs>